Hi there! You've stumbled upon my One Stop Sergeant Hammer Guide. In this guide, I'll try to teach you guys a few different builds. Each of these builds will be perfectly suitable to a different situation, based on your allies and your opponent's heroes. Firstly, I'd like to discuss Sergeant Hammer's key strengths. Now, if it sounds like I'm reading this from a piece of paper, it's because I am. Sergeant Hammer's key strengths are many, that's why I had to write them down. <laughs> And that's why I love this hero so much, and why I'm sure that with this guide you will love this hero just as much as I do, and find out that its weaknesses are not such are not so much weaknesses, and that it mostly has strengths. Sergeant Hammer is officially denoted as a ranged specialist, but I see her really as a mean, lean fighting machine, a ranged damage dealer. In truth, she has some mobility issues, but they can be easily overcome with a few tricks, tips, and uh, gameplay advices. Firstly, her key strengths. High range, high damage. Moreover, she has a very self-sufficient ability set, with abilities like first aid and a heroic ability that can be used every six seconds, she's almost never out of action. She has a low dependency on mana to still function at some percentage of her former self. For instance, just sieging up and not using much of your abilities, you can already contribute in a really great way and fulfill your major role. Now, although Sergeant Hammer has some issues with uh, mobility, in the sense that she cannot mount up, this actually is an advantage in combat. In combat, you can use your mobility Z once very effectively to get away quickly from opponents. Because instead of being able to mount up, S Sergeant Hammer on the Z hotkey has a short burst of speed equal to mount up speed or higher than mount up speed 60 percent actually so you can run you can outrun anyone in a short time the rub is that it's a 30 second cooldown timer so you can only pretty much use it once per combat maybe once again in the later stage of a combat if the team fight is lasting rather long this is actually a pretty big advantage because most heroes cannot reach 20, 30, 40, 50, let alone 60% movement increase for a short amount of time. Furthermore, you can capitalize with Sergeant Hammer on some really big advantages. Like, if you are one or two levels ahead, sometimes Sergeant Hammer will just allow you to not only push a key, but simply end the game. Because of the high pressure she's putting out, the high anti-building damage, damage, uh, anti damage, and the high range that she has. Finally, Sergeant Hammer is one of the most diverse talent sets in the game, which allows her to deal with all sorts of different threats and situations suitably. Let's take a look at Sergeant Hammer's abilities. Sergeant Hammer has three basic abilities, just like other heroes. Hers are Spider Mines, which you will lay down some mines that slow and damage enemies. Concussive Blast knocks back enemies while damaging them. Finally, there's Siege Mode. Normally, you just attack while moving around, but Siege Mode makes you immobile and you attack with a splash damage which also has a bonus damage against buildings. Her trait is that at enemies that are further away will take more damage from her, 20% extra. Finally she has two different heroic abilities, Blunt Force Gun which has a long cooldown, 70 seconds, it has a short casting delay and will hit enemies in a line all across the map. At level 20 you can upgrade this one to revolve around the planet every 5 seconds, which means it will hit a target like every 20 seconds or so because of the travel distance. It depends on the map and the exact route that you've chosen it to go. This may seem inbound because you can line it up on two different keeps and eventually kill them, but because it takes several minutes, it may not be impactful per se. It's a good one at level 20, but from level 10 to 19, not the best. Then finally there's Napalm Strike. It's cheap, has a short cooldown, and does pretty much as much damage as your ranged siege uh, attack. Furthermore, it leaves a zone on the ground where people take damage over time as you walk over it. It's very powerful. The talents I'd like to discuss in the game. Let's take a look at Sergeant Hammer in try mode to show you a little bit her range and the way that she works exactly. After that, I'll show you three different builds three different talent trees, and then we'll try her out once in a Hero League game where I will choose one of the builds based on the situations and play a demo game for you. Let's level her up a little bit and start with some uh, abilities. Firstly, there's the Spider Mines. 
You can place them at this range and you'll place three. They slow and damage enemies. You can have up to two to three sets of mines at the same time based on the standard cooldown. Then there's concuss Concussive Blast. When enemies get too near and you feel like you're in danger, Concussive Blast them away. Not only does that protect you from attacks for a while, it also damages them and it also pushes them in the further range of your attack that you would like them to be in. Siege mode is pretty cool. My current range is this much. About 60% of the range that I have as siege mode. My range right now is 5.5. The siege mode is 10 and a half. And you can always see what you're going to be able to reach with this dotted line that is always visible around yourself. So if you want to siege up exactly in tower range, just make sure it slightly overlaps like this. A little bit closer. Sli more, slightly more than slightly. You can attack that tower. This wall is attackable as well as this wall. Then let's take a look at our ultimates. Let me just pick this. Blunt force gun. Short casting delay hits everything in a path. Pretty cool. Although it's not my favorite. Here we got napalm strike. The range is slightly more than your siege range. And it's pretty powerful. It has a pretty good splash range and enemies keep getting damaged in this zone. You can also pick extra attack range and it will make your siege attack have the exact same range as your name palm strike. So it's kind of double up. But one is a skill shot that you can aim somewhere and hit many enemies and the other is a constant basic attack. Together, you're, you're putting out really high damage at long range. Now let's take a look at the builds that I prepared for you guys. Just got her washed. Hold on. There. This is the first build and it's my favorite. It's also the most powerful if you are in a team that can help peel for you. What is peel, you may wonder. Hero brawlers have this funny term called peel and people use it like everyone understands what it means, but you may not, or you may already. Peel is when, <laughs> it's a funny word, but when allies peel enemies away for you, they peel them away from you, you're the banana and the skin is the enemies and, the, and your allies will peel the skin away from the banana. So, when enemies can protect you, I mean, when your allies can protect you from enemies, push them away with uh, displacement abilities or stun them, or maybe there is a threat that if they get too near, they will die to something which is near you, that is called peel. If you have a good protection, good support, and enemies are generally zoned out at long range, this one is the perfect one. And this, you would always want this. This is the greedy damage hammer, and I call it the power drill hammer. We, stand, we start with advanced artillery. This one, like normally you have 20% extra bonus against long range uh, targets. With this one, it becomes 30%. So it's an extra 10%. Maelstrom shells is an extra 20% of your range. Whether you're sieged or unsieged is plus 20%. Very useful to stay even further away with your siege mode or to be more effective while you're unsieged. First aid is a very important ability in my books. The other abilities at level 7 are Hyper Thrusters, where you can do your Z more often, your Burst of Speed. And you also always have your Burst of Speed when you come out of the altar after healing up, or just when you got revived from death. I like First Aid, however. Occasionally, you will need to unseize and remove yourself from combat. But there will be situations where someone engages you, and you see you can take them out anyway, if you just had a little bit of extra HP. First aid will do that for you and will allow you to stay in a zone of influence of the team fight, peel someone away yourself, heal yourself up and stay effective. Mana usually isn't an issue with Sergeant Hammer because you can keep doing basic attacks for high splash damage. So as long as your HP is in order, you will be effective and you'll be an influence in the team fight. That's why first aid. Napalm Strike has the 
better overall functionality. And you will see it's a common theme in all of my Sergeant Hammer builds to use Napalm Strike as the heroic ability of choice. First Strike offers 25% bonus damage if you haven't been attacked for the last five seconds. So if you don't get engaged, all your attacks do 25% extra damage. This is the most powerful power drill hammer build, uh, talent that you can take at level 13. It adds the most damage when you are not engaged. That's why it's part of this build. Then you've got graduating range. Graduating range will increase your range when sieged by 20% every three seconds up to a total of 100% extra, five waves of range more. You can double your range as long as you stay sieged up, which is really effective if you place yourself smartly, you position yourself smartly in an important area, either where you're laying siege to the enemy keep or fort or wall, or you're defending your own, or you're zoning out people from an objective, or rather than zoning out, even better, the enemy is playing in the playground that is your range of influence, your area of where you can attack. They're fighting each other and you're in your sergeant hammer tank and you're laughing while you're right clicking enemy after enemy and seeing them explode like overripe watermelons. Finally, level 20 brought a new talent to us in the recent patch. Nexus Frenzy. Increase your range by 20%, even more, and increase your attack speed by 20%. Sergeant Hammer's standard attack time is one time per second. Now you will attack one time per 0.8 seconds. It's a lovely addition to an already extremely high damage output and it's the talent of choice for this greedy power drill hammer. Looking at the next build, the jackhammer. The jackhammer is pretty powerful too. It has a high basic attack damage output and as you can see the first three to four talents are the same. Level 13 is different though, whereas just now we took first strike in the knowledge and the safety and the security that our allies will peel and protect for us, now we take giant killer. The advantage of giant killer is that it does roughly as much, up to a little bit more damage when just shelling away at someone if the recipient is a very high HP melee, melee warrior. For instance, if the opponent has a Diablo, Giant Killer will out damage first strike. However, if the opponent is a Vala or a Nova, first strike would have been more damage output on them. But sometimes you get engaged on. If anyone it damages you at all, be it a minion, a tower, be it an enemy hero, a multi-shot that caught you, an illidan that dives you, first strike suddenly does nothing for a while. So it may do something the first two to three hits, but after that it wouldn't add anything. Giant killer always, always adds some damage. Now where first strike works on buildings as well, giant killer doesn't. It only works against enemy heroes. So you gotta be confident in the fact that when you take Giant Killer, it's because you will get dived on, you will get attacked constantly, and you're gonna have to still add bonus damage, but you won't be in your ivory palace or your ivory tower. Hover Siege hinges in on that same situation. Being able to remove yourself slightly from battle uh, and go to the fringes of your attack range is useful in this situation. Rather than being in an ivory tower, graduating range, first strike, shelling away while no one catches you, instead we are respecting the fact that we'll occasionally be engaged and may need to take a step back. Keep in mind that Hover Siege allows you to move in siege mode at 50% movement speed. This doesn't mean that you can safely get away from deep divers. If an Illidan dives on you or a Zeratul or a Nova, 50% movement speed isn't going to take you away quickly enough to make yourself safe. So in terms of actual safety in pure running away, we're always going to use our Z, our burst of 60% energy. Whether you're hover sieged or graduating range, it doesn't matter. When something really scary jumps on you, you're going to Z away. But you can use your foresight and your premonitions to see soon I will be engaged upon, probably. So I'm going to start taking a few steps away and that's why hover siege helps. Furthermore, this build is useful when you're working with a team of allies, for example, in solo queue or YOLO queue, like some people like to call it, like me. Um, if people don't know how to work with a Sergeant Hammer and they don't stay in Sergeant Hammer range, Hover Siege allows you to catch up with a skirmish that takes a few steps away from you every second while still continuing to add damage. 
Nexus Frenzy, however, stays the same. We go to the third build, Sergeant Napalm. We have established in this situation that we are fighting a team fight or a composition that will not allow you to siege up in peace safely at all. Imagine the Z burst of energy that you can do, 60% movement speed. Imagine you would need it every 10 seconds. Well, you don't have it. So rather, we don't siege up at all. We like to keep moving. And we become a device of survivability, self-peel, because no one else will do it for you. Maybe you're playing with people that are very selfish, or you're playing with people that uh, are all random allies, and they're all, you know, they're used to playing with themselves and not uh, uh, form a comprehensive team strategy. We have some different talents here. Let's take a look at them. Level 1 Regeneration Master. We sacrifice 10% of our basic attack uh, damage with the advanced artillery talent. Instead, we take Regeneration Master. This allows us to pick up globes and get extra health regen. As I said before, Sergeant Hammer is not very mana dependent. So if you keep your health high, you can continue to be an influence on the battlefield. Regen Master helps with that. Level 4 is a really interesting talent, a really interesting ability choice. It doubles the knockback distance of your concussive blast. Try it once in the shop. The results will be hilarious. They'll be catapulted away further than you can even attack them. This is very useful to keep yourself safe. First aid, once again, keep your HP high. Napalm Strike is going to be your main way of dealing ranged damage. Because you didn't take Maelstrom sh shells at level 4, your attack range is a little bit shorter, your basic attack range. But Napalm Strike is still very ranged. So that will be our key uh, usage of uh, attack damage. Level 13, Bullhead Mines. The middle mine, I call it Bullhead Mine, even though the original one is called Bullhead Mines. Blizzard recently changed that instead of all three mines knocking someone back, only the middle mine knocks someone back a little bit further. So you can go for the Bullhead Mine talent here, which will knock people back. Spread a few mines around yourself and see yourself even safer especially in combination with that excessive force. Level 16, Stone Skin. We are choosing already not to siege up too much. We haven't invested a lot in basic attack range or damage. Our Napalm Strike will be key. So we want to stay alive. We want to keep doing Napalm Strikes for as long as the fight will last. We're going a little bit in the direction of the old Tychus. First Aid, Stone Skin, we are ranged damage dealer, but actually we're kind of tanky. Sergeant Hammer's health pool is already respectable. Combine it with Regen Master, First Aid and Stone Skin, and we are actually becoming really, really survivable. We have all this self-peel, self-heal, and in the end, you won't be a liability in the damage dealing score screen with a good Napalm Strike usage. Finally, we round it off with Advanced Napalm Strike. Before Nexus Frenzy became a pickable ability, a pickable talent, I already thought Advanced Napalm Strike was just so extremely powerful. I was looking forward to that moment where I hit level 20 with Sergeant Hammer as Advanced Napalm Strike's range increases by 75% while the damage increases, I believe, with 50%. It becomes really long range, almost the whole screen, and you can now become Sergeant Napalm in truth with that ability. All right, let's talk about Hammer's key weaknesses quickly. Heartstoning takes you longer than other people. This is another reason why we would like to stay survivable, stay on the battlefield. If you Heartstone back and you go get full mana and HP, it's not feasible for you to get back to the curse, the tribute or whatever as quickly because of the travel time. You can't mount up. Now I've seen a lot of Sergeant Hammers, they are so <laughs> impatient that they Z back into the zone of influence, into some objective. It's a bad idea. You're going to arrive with 10 to 20 second cooldown on your Z and you're not going to be able to use it or siege up safely if someone engages hard on you within seconds of you arriving. 60% movement increase over 4 seconds, it's not really worth getting there that much quicker when you're just going to die when you get there. So you got to just keep in mind, if you're going to port home, do it at a smart time. So this is a bit of a weakness. Another thing is, arriving late to objectives hurts you. Sieging up a little bit before your allies arrive will help to do the most amount of damage. It's not prohibitive for you to arrive late, but it's better that you start going somewhere slightly before you are needed there. 
Finally, if your team is inexperienced to play with you, it will remove effectiveness for you. If you siege up in a wonderful location and you're hitting people, suddenly you've got a Sonya or Illidan on your team and they just they dive all the way to the back line. That is frustrating. It will remove effectiveness from you. But it's important to remember that your effectiveness is not completely hindered. You can still use Napalm Strike, you can unseage, and you can go to them. Let's talk about a few talents which are still good. All right, a few talents which are good, but which I didn't deal with. Resistant, while you're sieged up, 75% reduction of all debuffs, Root, Silence, Stun, Polymorph, and so forth. It's really good, but it doesn't add damage, and that's why I don't pick it. Focus Attack is really good as well. It adds about 10% to 7% DPS on average to all your attacks. But it's a little bit bugged right now. I tested it and the second focus attack doesn't do critical strike in some occasions when you're attacking single target. Furthermore, I don't think it adds as much extra damage as range does. In games like these, extra range usually equates to extra damage because you can get one more attack off. Vampiric Assault is really good, really good. But I hope that with good positioning, good peel from your teammates and yourself and first aid, you are safe enough. I can't imagine a hero where Vampiric Assault is better than on Hammer. Because she does splash damage, she splash Vampirics, she splash Life Leech. And that's insane. But I'd like to add more damage for range instead. Uh, Hypercooling Engines is great. 10 seconds off your cooldown, you can do it every 20 seconds. But I think with smart usage, you don't need the extra seconds. First aid is more useful. Like you can keep running away more often with Hypercooler. Or you can sometimes not need to run away with first aid. That's why um, I really love this one. But because it's on the same tree as first aid, I'm not picking it. Uh, let's see. And an executioner. 40% extra damage is insane. It's really good. You can get really high burst and really high damage over time. If there's a lot of CC, crowd control, stuns, slows, roots and so on on your team. But I'm not picking it in any of my builds because I find the other two talents more useful in general. Finally, Orbital BFG. As I said, it's really powerful over a long period of time in games that get dragged out. But because I don't like how good level 10 uh, Blunt Force Gun is, I don't want to be useless from level 10 to 19. Now, useless is an extreme word, but Napalm Strikes better. All right, that concluded the guide part, the explanation of the abilities and talents. Now I'd like to show you guys, put theory into practice. I'm gonna play a hero league game, I'm gonna pick Sergeant Hammer, and I'm gonna see which heroes do the opponents have, which ones do I have, and what do I think my role is going to be? Am I gonna take Hover Siege or Graduating Range? Or do I have to completely provide all the self peel, all the self protection to myself, and just become Sergeant Napalm? There we go, we found a game, Hero League. Let me tell my, oh, I'm first pick. That is convenient. Hi guys, good luck have fun. Deal with it, Dashful, Your Shadow, and Denny and Light. Hey Denny, I play with Denny and Light regularly. <laughs> yep, just me. We're playing against Silas, Curry Boy, Larna, Rats Killer, and Victus. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't really care what my allies are picking. I'm gonna deliberately not influence them to try and show <laughs> that Sergeant Hammer is a valid pick, no matter the circumstance. So far, we've got a Tychus in our team. To round out a team composition, yeah, he's going stitches because I'm Hammer. That's okay. To round, to round out. A team composition, we're gonna probably need a melee warrior, a healer, and then something else. With hammer, I like double healer or double melee warrior to provide more support or peel for me. Murdin is a popular pick, as well as Stitches. Talking about hammer's weaknesses, who are the best counter picks against Sergeant Hammer? My list goes like this. Best counter pick is Stitches. Whenever I siege up, it's very easy to land a hook on me. If he hooks me and he pulls me in, I become an easy kill for the opponent. He can also gorge me immediately. Even if I Z away, if he gorges me and I just z he still catches me. That means I don't have Z when I come out of gorge, which sure as shit seals my fate and gets me to die there. 
Danny and Light seems to be AFK. Danny, were you AFK or did you pick Illy? I'm just curious because he picked so late. <laughs> okay, it is good. So we need one healer. Deal with it, healer. I like Lily, but Uther, Mafirion are fine as well as a healer. Even Rhaegar is uh, good here. Rhaegar is probably, in fact, one of the best healers we could have at this point because we have an Illidan. <laughs> Rhaegar, Mouth, Uther. Mouth is pretty good here because Rhaegar and Uther could get hooked and get pulled in. Illidan material getting hooked in by Stitches would not be at risk. But because they can Q away, they can evasion away, they can, uh, you know, Illidan can sweeping strike, he can alt. Plus, they're not as squishy. Um, if, if Rhaegar or Uther get hooked and die, that would be mean we don't, suddenly don't have a support and that would be kind of problematic. The opponents had a Lily, Jaina, Stitches, Vala, and one more, I forgot which one. So let's analyze what they have. They have a Stitches who can hook me in if I siege up too obviously. We have the early laning phase to think about and we have the late game. In the late game, I could take graduating range and hope that enemies block hooks for me or I stay out of hook range because I can shoot so far. I can also do hover siege so I can keep moving and try to dodge hooks like that. Or I can choose to go with a build where sieging ain't even that important. I'm mostly just doing napalm strikes. Do they have someone who can deep dive on me? Oh yeah, their final one was a Kerrigan. Kerrigan can jump on me, but will be at risk if she goes too far away from Lily. And Lily will be forced to stay with Vala and Jaina as well. So I think while Kerrigan is a threat to me, either with me, while Kerrigan is a threat to me, I think that she cannot afford to jump on me with impunity. So I'm not going to take something really scared like Regeneration Master. I'm going to go with Advanced Artillery here still. Maybe my first game today without Russians. Privyet. <laughs> like this, I guess. Placing some safety mines here. Let's see, it's Lily, Jaina, and is there a Stitches as well? No, Stitches is top, that's good for me. I can siege up already, start doing some damage. Okay, look, Kerrigan is on me. Gonna have to do some peel. So I'm not gonna siege up again, because Kerrigan is gonna keep trying to attack me. So it's not important to keep sieging up all that much. You can just do basic attack like this. I don't know why Tychus was AFK. But yeah, this isn't going to be one of those glorious, I'm going to keep sieging up and shelling away at their towers type of games. Lily uh, really wants to hit me as much as possible. When I take damage, I won't be as effective. She was also trying to hit me with that blinding win, which means I hit, missed two of my attacks. Tyke is taking a little bit too much damage there. Ping danger. Yep. Okay. okay. We should have warned that Kerrigan disappeared. But then again, we didn't really know for sure. But we should always show the eventuality, perhaps. So any basic attack I do now is going to miss because of that. Okay, Vala is coming. It would actually be good for me to be in the middle now, since we're not really getting pushed on. It would allow me to get to the tribute easier. I'm gonna take uh, Maelstrom shells here, extra attack range. Just adding some damage here on Vala. 
So the thing is spawning at the bottom. I'm gonna try and clear this wave quickly. So that we get some extra XP. But now I should get there. Okay. That, that, that works for me. Just delay it. Hopefully don't die. We may get some siege damage in here. My tankers did die. Oh nice, they got Jaina. Three versus four. They got someone. So we're gonna sit, soak extra here and they're gonna take a long time to clear that tribute. Really good choice uh, strategy call there by um, Tyrael. They're still trying to get it. Kind of sweet. Sure Tyrael died, but we're getting a lot done here. We go first aid. Are we actually gonna get it? That would be quite monstrous. <laughs> well done! We didn't get it yet, but... Yeah, I'm just gonna first aid here, start the cooldown on time. Is the enemy gonna get it finally? No! Still not! I wanna kill this moon well. Maybe now I can help. They've delayed for so long, I'm really proud of them. Yeah, walk through. You can get a little bit uh, daring with your Z when um, it's going well. But one of my rules with Sergeant Hammer is don't siege up if you don't have Z available. Only do that in extreme cases where you're very confident about the situation. The other than did perish there. Okay, I dodged all their skill shots, which is nice. But now I am a bit at danger. Finally... We lost some of the XP advantage we had because we did in the end come in health and uh, they leveled up and they also got the tribute. So mediocre follow up after that. Still a slight lead for us in terms of XP, though perhaps not in tribute. I think Stitches may try to put himself here. Now he's at the top. Okay, so I'm covering middle XP. While Stitches is at top, we have every lane. Illidan did a good job there getting the Bruiser camp. It's very nice to get um, Bruisers in between tributes. Because it puts pressure while they cannot afford to, tr to defend it. Now I'm a little low. I do need some healing from mouth. They just finished the siege giants. Two dead. But Stitches died. I still have Z, so I'm pretty safe to poke here. If I do it smart. Uh, not with those two so near. Nice. Got that one. Uh oh, uh oh. oh. Oh, that was a uh, pity. And they did get the tribute. Hero levels are the same and we continue to lose more heroes. Siege Giants are pushing here, but the same can be said for at the bottom. I would say they're ahead in tributes, a little bit ahead in XP. They have a slight lead in this game. Bit too many uh, deaths here at this point where Kerrigan went into Maelstrom mode. Gotta try. Yeah, we can try. 
this time I'll make an exception to my rule. My rule is never to Z out of the altar, but in this case I think it's forgivable. I don't foresee a fight here soon. I think they're doing their own boss. And either way I'm in a safe location. Ah, oh, that's a nice tribute spawn location. Yeah, they did do their own boss just now. That much was obvious. There was nothing else on the map to be done, really. Now, I do think that I'll be engaged a fair amount of time. So I'm thinking, shall I take... Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a um, giant killer here. Which works well on stitches. Now, I have to follow here. Okay, good. We should get this one. We should both back up the siege giants as well as defend the against the boss. Uh, the siege giants are dead. Someone defend the boss. So if there's many people somewhere else on the map, as hammer, you can do a lot just attacking by yourself. I see two here, I see two here, so I can get a lot of siege damage done on this four. Illidan is taking their bruiser. I'm gonna wait till the minions come again and land a napalm strike on everything. Uh, he has uh, the sludge thing. Okay, there's a tribute at the bottom. Shall I follow? No, they sprinted. So we should go there now. Did did a good bit of damage on the fort. I should have liked to finish it. But it's too far away for me now. I don't have Z. I don't want to get too aggressive here. Let's see. Jaina's there. I think I can siege up here safely. Okay, there's three here. Need to disengage. We got a forward. Um, let's land a napalm strike here. Do some damage. We're gonna get 16 soon, so I'm gonna try and clear this up. Uh, I saw them heading to the top. Just giving a warning to mouth. This one is a bit risky too. That was uh, hard for me to follow up on. An awkward fight that I hoped we would lose only one at, maybe. So I'm gonna go for a uh, hover siege here. I do like myself some graduating range, but I think it'll be useful to get out of range. Yeah, so we got cursed, but we still got two... Um, two uh, tributes captured, so if we defend this well... We will be able to get them back later. Need to stay behind buildings so I can't get hooked. Okay, you hooked. That was a pity that uh, Malf went down to that. It's unfortunate to lose our um, support. No more healing. Hope he can get away. Okay, Jaina deleted. We'll now try to focus Kerrigan. I have to try and cancel this out. I don't like her to keep healing, but I did put myself in danger. I can't get away. Not sure. I Yeah, that was not the right one. Mm, I just couldn't bear to see all their HP regenerated there. Need to fight together. We're still slightly ahead in terms of siege. Uh oh, I don't like Tychus doing that Odin there, but he may survive. Let four die back, please. They're just baiting out. Ah, oh, that was such a bait. Why, why attack two versus many? It's okay to lose the fort. It was not okay to lose Malfurion. Boss soon again. Boss 30 seconds. 
pair of traps. Illidan finished that one. Just don't go there. Just don't go there yet. Wait till we see them. They know we're here. Let's do it. I think they're doing their balls. Uh, I think we should push with ours. Not sure if everyone agrees. It could leave us in a risky position. If I get caught here, I'm going to Z away. That doesn't constitute getting caught. Okay, Kerrigan is gone. I would ideally like to focus Jaina, but now the Stitches is caught, some damage on him will be okay. Nice and tangle, well done, deal with it. Okay, it's time to unsiege and push. Are we gonna lose a key? It would be nice if Tyrio maybe would defend that a bit. We can do pretty hard push here, four people dead. Yes, actually, good point, good call. We can definitely end here. They still have four people dead. Ignore Lily. Nice play. <laughs> nice. GG. Good hero damage. Only died twice. Very good siege damage. Nice healing by our Malfurion. And Tyrael adds that little bit of extra support that I love so much while playing as Sergeant Hammer. One healer is nice, a little bit of extra shield is a bonus. Because left alone, if I don't get engaged, I will do a massive amount of damage. Even against something like Stitches, because Giant Killer gets more and more effective when attacking high HP targets. Kerrigan could dive on me, but like I told you, she can't really afford to dive on me. She tried it just now at the Watchtower, I push her away once and that's it, end of story. She doesn't have her combo. Even if you don't have Concussive Blast, you can still try to sidestep Kerrigan's combo by going north and south when she comes from the right. Running away directly, which is your instinct, is going to get you caught most often. So you could say that Kerrigan feeds on fear. All right. Hope you enjoyed this demo game. I'm going to show you the stats a little bit. Hope you enjoyed this demo game as well as the guide. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and that your Sergeant Hammer's play may go upwards in level after seeing these look forward to more one-stop guides in fact my next guide will be the first map guide about sky temple as i think it's a really fun interesting and sometimes complicated map where the correct decision can lead to victory or defeat thanks for watching please give my channel a subscribe and leave some positive or constructive feedback in the comment section that can help me make these videos even better thank you so much and see you guys next time. Bye.